I'll hope that answered the question. It, it does, actually, and it, it's a very interesting <clears throat> point. I mean, um, Mr. Rudling, can you speak to the uh, sort of the origins of this type of law in Sweden? Um, I, I think I read somewhere that uh, it is your understanding that the uh, consent laws in Sweden are based on the idea that uh, they're, they're, they're actually possibly even sexist, that one has to actually protest to the point of, of creating uh, scratches or... Yeah. The, the law says in order to... You have, you, as a female, or as a victim, actually, you have to protest against the sexual act or you have to resist the physical, I mean, physically. Those are the requirements. If you haven't protested or you haven't resisted physically, then it cannot be rape. And then, as Peter points out, then the perpetrator had to understand that there was resistance or there were objections. So these, that, that's what the law says. The law says nothing about consent in, in this region. It, it is not about consent. To look at the law as we have it right now, I mean, uh, it originally comes from, this, from the uh, 1700s. At that particular time, women were not trusted. They were regarded as being lower in moral standards than men. So what a woman said, uh, that was not relevant. That's why in rape, you had to have some type of evidence that there had been rape. The woman, it was necessary that the woman should fight for her life, she should scream, and absolutely best would have been if there were eyewitnesses. It was very, very difficult to actually uh, get a conviction for rape because the standards were so high. What has happened over the years, we kept the basic law, but we lowered the standards of, of violence. Now what we say is, you don't have, a woman don't have to fight for her life. It's enough if the man lies on top of her. That's regarded as a, That's the general situation. It has been discussed for many years that we should have a law similar to the law in Australia, Canada, US, UK, Belgium, etc., where it's based on consent. For some reason, people Let's don't... Let's pause for a second because the sound came. Okay, go ahead. It has been a discussion in Sweden for some time to change the law so it's based on, on consent, similar to the law in Australia, Canada, the UK. But for some reason, people don't want that. I don't understand. What's at stake? Uh, what's at stake with regards to this particular case? I mean, it's a very high-profile case, and of course, it has many facets to it. Um, uh, but just in terms of gender politics, if you want to use that phrase, or in terms of uh, you know, uh, I don't know, the well-being of uh, you know citizens in a society, uh, what's at stake here with this particular case in your mind beyond the case? Like, what is this? What is this at stake in terms of the social consequences of this particular case, if any? Um, if I could just make a point, just before he answers that, because I think I could clarify this. Um, my understanding, Goran, is that the way this works now, even though times have changed since the 1700s in relation to sexual offences law, but um, is it fair to describe it that at the moment in Swedish law there is a presumption of consent unless it's demonstrated otherwise? Is that a fair comment? I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, a presumption. A presumption of consent. A presumption um, that a woman consents to sex unless she actually um, does something by way of conduct to show okay. that she doesn't. Okay. I think. I think I know what you mean now. Uh, it's uh, as it is. A, a woman is regarded to want to have sex all the time until she says no or makes or, or resists the sex. Uh, 
And to me, that's, that's very strange because that's not my experience. I don't myself want sex all the time until I say no. When I want sex, I say yes. So, so it's so so what that's why it's so difficult you know, in very many cases in Sweden for a for a woman to prove that it was a rape. Because from the beginning the court says, Well, you wanted it. It's now you have to prove that you didn't want it. And that's yeah. why And that's where you uh, showed me the case where a a a woman had been gang raped by a group of people. She resisted the first one, and it was found that that was rape. But because she gave up and the other ones continued on after, they were acquitted of rape because she didn't struggle or didn't continue to resist. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and, and that, that demonstrates that issue, doesn't it? Yes. And, and the, to, to, to demonstrate the issue even further, in a recent Green Paper, I mean, a governmental study of the... Of the sexual law reform of 2005, they have, they have realized that there is a problem. If, if a woman, for instance, is raped by three people, and the first one uses force, and then she gives up, presently, the other ones will be acquitted, even though anybody could understand she didn't consent. So they are, there is a proposal to get some kind of consent law into the Swedish sex law. Yes. Because so, my point, and, my what, point is, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So, what you can say, I think, regarding to the question of, of how society sees this, what because of we have very strange sex laws, and most people don't understand it, and there is a confusion between want and consent. Everybody, we have, we have to make some change. To the law, that's what everybody understands. But it's also this situation that very many cases of, of rape and, and rape investigations, the police at an early stage dismiss it, I mean, closes the case. So that's why when this Assange case happened, everybody, not everybody, but some people thought at least you have, you have to try to look into the case just a bit more. You have to examine it slightly more. You can't just uh, dismiss it at such an early stage. And, and uh, because most rape cases, they dismiss after a few days. Very many cases, they don't even interview the suspect. So, so there is a po popular, what do you call it? Uh, people want rape charges to, to, be, to be regarded as serious charges and the police should do an effort to investigate. Do you feel that that kind of investigation happened in this case? Yes, it did. Do you feel that the investigation was properly conducted in this case? Uh, no. Uh, I don't think anybody looking at it would say that. Firstly, the police and the prosecutors, they have recommendations how, in, how victims of sex crimes should be interviewed. It has to be documented by video, or at least the interview should be tape recorded. The reason is the words that the, act, the victim uses is evidence. It's the most important, because there is normally no other evidence. So the words that the victims use are very, very important to catch. In this particular case, no video, no tape recorder. It's just a summary. Somebody, Sophia told the police, woman and the police woman made notes and then she wrote down what they talked about. It's it's below standard and, and in what we call interviews should never be conducted this way. It's against recommendations.